Well, friends, I don't know about you, but I feel like TF combiners have been a bit stagnant for a while. I mean, for ages it just felt like all we had was those two Energon sets, with endless re-releases and a bajillion bloody third-party upgrades, driving aftermarket prices up and up until you struggle to get changed from a 300 bob note. Then there was that awkward, unsatisfying, like, puberty period. Movie Devastator, Animated Safeguard, and the Power Cores. But it would seem, at long last, combiners are back in earnest. These five dudes are the full of Cybertron Combaticons, and what a bad bunch of dudes they are. Now there are at last count about a quintillion variations on this set, so the one I'm going to show you today is the retail release. Which means they're not G1 accurate, they're not G2 accurate, and they're not even full of Cybertron accurate, but they do look a bit like the inside of a packet of opal fruits. So if you're like me, and let's face it, you probably are a bit, then you'll remember hearing the news after War for Cybertron that the sequel was going to have Bruticus in it, and you'll remember nursing that toy boner, or toy lady boner, for the longest of times. I mean, how exciting was this? A new Bruticus! So let's see if they live up to my unreasonably high expectations, beginning, why not, with that old yellow fella, Swindle. Yes indeed, things have taken an uncharacteristically burly turn for old Swindy Lauper here, and surprisingly he's on level pegging with Onslaught as the beefiest one on the team. So check him out, he's a pretty good size for a deluxe. He's all tall and broad and his colours are just killing it, with like these striking yellows and their sexy purple accents. Head's a good shape but it's a bit indistinct, blacker than a black steer's tuckus on a moonless prairie night, with like just that little purple ice strip that's almost always in shadow. It's a similar thing with his posability, it's ostensibly quite good, but the unfortunate joints rob him of any cool action poses. I mean, check out his super awkward shoulder joints and his ridiculous calf to thigh ratio. Annoyingly as well, size doesn't necessarily equal badassness, because while he does look mean and intimidating, he only looks that way from straight on. If you look at him from the side or the back, then the illusion immediately implodes. There's just nothing to him, he's all there, with his wafer-thin torso balanced delicately on his transformery guts. And that also means that he just weighs nothing. It's clearly not a problem with the plastic quality this time, it's just that there's barely anything here. Swindle indeed. <laughs> Transformation's irritatingly brief as well. I mean, I'm all for simplicity, but there's like nothing to do. I barely even feel like I'm involved. Having said that though, the alt mode kind of saves the day. I mean, it's not necessarily what I would have wanted from a classic swindle four years ago, but it defo works for Fall of Cybertron. Check it out, it's a nice, chunky, destroyer-class jeep thingy that looks like it could barrel along pretty good. Maybe it would have been nice if it had done the downward wheel thing, but I think I'll live. And with that, swindle just about scrapes through with a C-. minus. Now onto technically the most long-awaited High Moon Combaticon, who's been around since Game 1, Mission 1. It's it's Brawl! Sadly, this guy really isn't the hulking mean machine he ought to be. I mean, look, he's a bit diddy and malnourished for a guy whose name means fighting. A robot mode's seriously kibble-heavy, with this massive ass end stretching way further down than it needs to. Arms a little more than feeble tendrils. Nicely long, but feeble-looking legs and useless feet. And this afterthought of a head. Colours are seriously dodgy on the retail release, too. I mean, I appreciate they needed to be eye-catching, but this blinding lime green's a bit much, don't you think? They don't ruin the admittedly excellent level of detail, but they don't exactly bring over Brawl's hard-ass personality. It looks more like a... funny thing that's green. Thankfully then, the transformation's sort of cool, and the tank mode's loads of fun. I mean, I love the turret, and the design's pretty cool, apart from the conspicuous gap-gap, with the wee head poking out. But again, it's just a bit too small and wimpy looking to really be any good. It's almost like he's the baby one in the team, you know, like Uni or Scrappy-Doo. And there shouldn't be a baby one in the Combaticons. If there is, it should be Swindle, cause look, ah. Oh. But weirdly, that guy ends up being the beef bus. This is Brawl! And in the gritty reboot of the Decepticon army team, Brawl, being the tank, needs to be the tank, you know? On the plus side though, Brawl does have potential for a hilarious rude mode with the awkward positioning of the combiner cloaca there, but I really shouldn't have to work so hard to try and squeeze a bit of enjoyment out of a toy. What you saying then, Vortex? Yes indeed, this guy's clearly the most successful of the bunch, TBH. Check him out, he's a feisty little one. He's the sleekest and tightest of the team, and unlike Brawl, it's appropriate, and unlike Swindle, he's not lying to me. He is what you think he is, and what you think he is, is freaking righteous. I guess the big question is, where the frig did these colours come from? From. Since when was Vortex ever bright red and purple? I mean, in G1 he was grey and a bit purple, and in Fall of Cybertron he was gold and a bit red. So why are the secondary colours now all up in this bitch? Vortex don't care. Vortex don't rely on nostalgia or, you know, looking like the thing that it is a toy of. And I respect him for that. It's all blazing all the way with, like, these double sword gun... Are they even guns? I think they're just swords. Bitchin' giant shuriken, and like the face of a murderous spider god secreted in his belly. Good. Good. 
I'm not saying he's perfect. I mean, he's got his inner shin combiner kibble, slightly dorky arms, and like these weird little posability hampering collars. But those are nowhere near enough to stop this little troublemaker from being the strongest of the crew, and probably the one that would fare the best as a standalone toy. Well, that's enough gushing about the robot. Let's get to the chopper. <laughs> Conversion sequence is a friggin' blast too, and I'll be damned if this super deformed little lobster copter ain't tight as anything. It's definitely mean and murderous, but it's also a tiny bit adorable. I just love the smooth, seamless finish and the hilariously undersized tail fin. Check it out, you even get an optional G1 accurate proboscis pistol. Probistol? Probosbistol? I am all about the Vortman right here, and this alt mode is a friggin' slam dunk. Nah, if only it didn't look quite so much like a penis. Fourthest of the Limbots then is Blastoff, who for me was always the least interesting interesting Combaticon? I mean, he's a stone-cold badass now, but time was, all they had going on really was that whole why is there a shuttle on the army guy team thing, and that whole why isn't he bigger than everyone else me do? But we're talking Cybertron, so none of that matters. He's a flying dude who couldn't be bothered to be a seeker. Is that alright with you? Anyway, what a sweet purple pimp Notorious B.O. turned out to be. With a sweet head sculpt and a rocking bod. Check out these shoulders, I've never seen anything quite like it. it looks like a friggin' cathedral. They don't really click in that well though, so you can either go sloppy and handsome or uptight and functional. And he looks pretty hardcore dual wielding and or arm um, mounting some pistols. Most excellent legs too, nicely smooth and deftly posable. Factor in the scrumptious colours and Blastoff turns out to be a bit of a surprise hit. <laughs> Brother transforms pretty well too. I mean, it's a bit of a prick to get the legs to click in properly, but it's absolutely achievable. And the resulting shuttle mode is a B A B E. Check it on down. I just love the little faux cockpit and the guns and the shape. It's not quite like anything, it just feels completely fresh. All said then, Blastoff is a spiky rounded dynamo of pure purple joyousness. Lastly, and by all means leastly then, is the leader man, Onslaught himself. And oh my, what a sleek and slight figure this guy really shouldn't be. The thing about this guy is he doesn't look awful, but he kind of is. He's actually quite handsome, I love the shape and the detail and the design of the torso is quite cool. The head sculpt's another triumph. But where's the beef? He looks almost nothing like he does in the game. He's way more feeble and insubstantial. He's the size and shape of a regular guy, when he should be a hulking fatty. I mean, the legs are a bit weedy and vacant, and while they're poseable, the joints are incredibly heavy. The arms are dreadful too. I mean, you almost can't tell that these bits are even arms. They just look like a, a bit of the torso. So these little flappy cubits appear to be his entire arms. Even his gun's a bit of a hollow mess. This guy's just a train wreck. To his credit, Slaughty does turn in a passable transformation, but this is just wretched. It's just a friggin' omni-shamble, with this frenzied cluster of parts all at the front that stops about an inch and a half too soon. Horrible leg stumps sticking out the back like G1 Cup's idiot brother. Look, I appreciate the fact that he even gets an alt mode when he's so obviously just here to be the combiner boss. But when all you're expected to do is live up to a 30-year-old toy that's just a really long truck with a gun on top, and you still can't manage it, then that's no bloody good, is it? And while it is noble of him to sacrifice absolutely everything in service of the combiner mode, what if he was the only one you got. Add all this to the fact that he's the only one in the team that has a genuine non-Energon repaint classics versus competitor that smashes him in every conceivable way. And Onslaught is not having a good day. More like Offslaught, am I right? Now then, let's make some huge happen. <laughs> Combining these guys is a complete blast. It's just so refreshing to have a brand new combiner that doesn't do any automorph. It doesn't cut any corners. I feel like I did that. It's just full on Scramble City for the new age and I love it. Now as each of the limb dudes has a separate arm mode and leg mode so it can do either thing. There are potentially innumerable configurations of this big guy. But we're just going to go with the default one otherwise we'll be here all day. Fall of Cybertron Bruticus then is indisputably a huge impressive beast. Far surpassing his predecessors in height 
fight to become the Burj Khalifa of the Bruticus clan, so why am I not in love with it? Let's take a closer look. To be fair, the torso is completely marvellous. You kind of start to see why everything else about Onslaught was so lacklustre. Dude commits 100% to the combined form, so it sort of ends up being worthwhile that he phoned in his other modes. Head sculpt is insanely good. Detail is off the hook and it just couldn't be any more distinctively and perfectly Bruticus. But you know what sucks? Six head sculpts and no light piping. <laughs> Colours are a bit dim too, and all that brilliant detail gets a bit lost when it's surrounded by all these enormous, glaringly bright limbs. It's like if Bruticus is a galaxy of fabulosity, then Onslaught is a supermassive black hole in the middle. So Brawl goes a bit bananas, putting in a bitch in performance making up the foot. Swindle barely changes it all. Vortex busts out a cluster of hidden joints and makes with the propellers and the karate chop hand. And Blastoff forms the longest and wibbliest arm since Mr. Tickle, which is either the best they could do without compromising Blastoff too much, or it's an extremely laboured arm to G1 Blastoff's extendo waist. And quite frankly, it's all a little bit more out of proportion than I'm prepared to forgive. It all just becomes painfully clear that in a five-way combiner, the middle guy needs to be the big guy. Hello? Yeah, sorry, I've got to take this. Hello, yeah, is that every third party company? What is taking us along with my Ultra Class Universe Onslaught Combiner Upgrade Kit? I thought this was what you people were for! Also, weapons. Each of these guys' guns can clump together in like a billion different Ultra Shooters, which handily evens out the arm balance a bit. And if you want, you can take Onslaught's Double Greener and slap it on here for some back-mounted double guns. Because why wouldn't you? So this is your official Generations Bruticus, and so it shall be forevermore. Is it perfect? It is not. Is it the updated Bruticus I've always dreamed of? Not really. But does it scratch the itch? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of does. And most importantly of all, is it tons of fun? Oh yes it is. But I was always going to say that, wasn't I? So if you're like me and you bun the Combaticons in all of their forms, then I don't even need to tell you to check this thing out. But if you're on the fence, then there's probably a few too many things wrong with it, then you'll be willing to overlook for a 60 to 100 quid price tag. You know what, maybe just grab a Vortex and a Blastoff and be done with it. Big thanks to Jordan Jodewaters, and that's the end of the video! <laughs>